Hi friends, welcome to a new session from scratch shell scripting with examples. So what we will learn in this session is basics of shell scripting. How do we create shell script and creating a shell script though basic but doing very advanced job. The advanced job is installing MySQL automatically and after installation giving you the root password. For example, MySQL is already running. You see MySQL is already running. Assume that it is MySQL Community Edition or Old Edition or MariaDB. I want to remove it. I want to install it again and I want to set the password also. So I want to set the repository. I want to do a lot of stuffs, but that through a shell script. This session will help you in understanding that level of shell scripting which wherein you will be able to automate the process of MySQL installation through a shell script with uh, some interesting examples and commands. So for this purpose let's create a directory mkdir and uh, let's say shell programming. Let's go to this directory shell programming. This directory shell programming is a new directory I created Let's start uh, from some commands. For example, I want to check the date. The command is date. I want to display a message to welcome to the shell programming. So I can type welcome to shell programming. So this is a normal statement which will display the message on the shell prompt, I, I mean on the terminal. If, however, the difference is if you use hyphen n, what will happen? It will suppress the line feed after the message and the shell prompt will appear immediately after the message. So immediately after the message, you can see the shell prompt. Similarly, if I have to take some value from you, I can use read, let's say A. You type value something, let's say 20, the value goes to the variable A. But if I want to display a message to you, I can use hyphen P, P for prompt. Enter a value. That's how you accept value and followed by the variable name. So now you type 50 and the value 50 go to the variable A. To check the value of this variable, you can use echo dollar a. Dollar sign is mandatory to get the value of the variable. So we have understood how to display a message to the user, how to check, I mean how to accept the value from the user, how to display it back and how to uh, execute a command. So for example, if I want to grab terminal or sorry password line I want to grab this uh, okay uh, temporary from the file slash where slash log slash mysqld dot log so you will get the line now, if I want to grab the line, this line contains that, but if there are multiple lines, I may probably want to add something more. So any character means single dot because grab accept the regular expression. The dot is the regular expression which is specify any character followed by any number of characters. The star basically means zero or more of the previous character. So zero or more of previous character followed by root at localhost. I want to grab this and followed by colon and if I specify this I'll get the same output. So if you use this space also if you want to include the space also. So why I am doing this because I want to use SED that is stream editor. And I want to substitute this. All right, that S for substitute and dot star and everything after this. 
because I want to substitute uh, whatever it is from here to this along with the space the space also I want to substitute this with nothing and if you use this command substitute alright so what you will expect you will get this substitute SED hyphen S and uh, let's put it uh, uh, in double quote substitute so what you will get this has given me the exactly the password only nothing else and if you see I got exactly the password so to grab the password from the temporary file I am going to use this command grab with SED command and grab temporary password if I want to assign it to a variable let's say temp pass equals to this and I can give the entire command equal to then within the uh, double quote I can give the command the entire command I can give you in double quote so uh, this is the command I am putting inside the double quote since grab is a command to execute the command we also must have to specify back quote this make it as a command execution of the command so this is a command this also a command so I want to put everything in back quote that will make it as a command so the out output is what what do you expect control C one second I we missed something so grab up to here this is a command all right so I want to execute grab command from here to here uh, from here to here this is a command I want to execute uh, where is this SAD grab oh this is single code should have been to into the command right and then back code so back code and followed by double code and that will close that so this is a minor uh, typos we have to be careful because the command start from here and it ends here this is the entire command so in back code you have to include the entire command and since I started the command in double quote I have to put it now if I use this echo dollar temp pass it will display my password which is grabbed so this is one basic example of the command what if I put all these commands into a script let's try simple script with a simple example let's understand how the shell script is created with some view basic ideas about the commands how they are executed let's uh, start with the first script so vi script 1 this is my first script 1 conventionally you must end the script with sh now this is the script 1.sh which I am creating now first thing is uh, we call it as shebang exclamation mark hash exclamation mark slash bin slash bash or you can type slash user slash bin slash bash how do you confirm that which bash is used open another terminal window and confirm that you can simply use which bash so so there's a typo sorry which batch that will give you the path of the bash so which command will tell you which bash is going to be used so that give me the path so therefore I have written user bin bash so slash user slash bin slash bash this is called shebang this command may be slash bin slash bash bin sh or ksh or tcsh or Perl or Python if you want the commands listed in the file to be parsed or to be understood to be executed by a specific executable you can specify the path of that executable here in the first line so basically this tells the uh, compiler I mean this tells the shell that this is the executable this is the binary which needs to be used to parse this shell script or this script then you must put appropriate comment so uh, welcome display okay uh, you should put some some comment proper right so this is first comment I'm going to type this line indicate a comment hash any hash after this first hash is actually considered as a comment so hash 
followed by this line another comment i want to put with a message welcome message for the user on the terminal so this is just a comment this will not be displayed actually and i am just i'm just uh, giving you the conventional way the good practice for writing comments you must always write these kind of comments in your shell script and that make uh, your script readable and easily understood by anybody who is working on your script now second is i want to clear the screen welcome the message i can write that here itself on the terminal and clear it first clear it and then welcome clear the screen and welcome the user so that's what i want so therefore i am typing the command clear this is the command which will be executed whatever command you have done that will be executed here and the message is echo hello and welcome to shell programming So this is the message you are displaying for the user. The message will be displayed. So this is a welcome message for the user. Now, if you want to switch to a directory, if you want to execute some more commands on this, you can type those commands. Like I want the user to enter his name and the directory to which the user wish to work. So that because that is a tricky situation, you will not get the solution on internet. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate the issue also, error also, and the root cause of the error and the solution also. So I'm putting another message here. So these are the two lines I executed. And after that, I'm using another. So to save the time, I best thing is I use YY and I paste it here. P and then P, P. So I, I use these line multiple places. And let's insert some blank lines here. Blank lines here. A small O can be used to insert the blank line. So uh, these are the lines uh, for comments. I, I want to write comments here in these lines. So next comment is ask some basic details from user and verify all right so ask some basic details from the user and verify so to get the details from the user whatever command i executed on my shell prompt i'm going to specify those same commands only here so echo Uh, let me directly write with the message okay so the command is read with hyphen p your name with directory you wish to work into typical location and I want to add for example I'm giving the example also to the user so that the user understand what am I trying to suppose to enter so example I'm giving this to the user and this will be the message displayed to the user for example my name is Ram and I wish to work in slash root slash Python directory all right I want to switch to this directory and so followed by colon and then you have to type the two variables which you want to take from the user first is the name so let's say username and second is you want to take the directory input so let's say uh, input directory or let's say work directory work directory so I'm taking two values so I specify two variables you can specify as many variables as you want separated by space so this will display the message to the user that your name with the directory you wish to work into so for example you can enter ram plus slash root slash python and uh, uh, then you are asking the user the, the variable which will hold the value supplied by the user so username and work directory 
so this will be the message uh, you know and uh, verify let's verify this directory uh, so echo you you're welcome I want to type with a proper message hey dollar variable name username so this is the message will that will be displayed so you want to work in the directory display I want to display work dir so it will display this message hey for example I entered ram hey ram so you wish to work in slash root slash python that message will be displayed and then I'm uh, another displaying cool echo cool this message now uh, display some other stuff for the user before we get into this let's do some more stuff some more interesting commands that can be in entered or that can be used some of the commands for example uh, who all are logged in so for example display logged in users so what can I do for that so what I'll type is uh, I'll type the simple command who command and the PWD command the user logged in R so I can type with echo command echo following users are logged in similarly more examples echo you are working on I want to display the command and the command is always given in back quote so let me type with it in double quotes you are working on and the command I want to type is you name hyphen R the shell version or the complete hyphen A I can type with a complete setup so this is the command substitution you name hyphen A will be displayed you are working on Linux and the kernel version is I can type the same thing and the kernel version is is I can type back quote you name hyphen R that will give you the kernel version so this will display the kernel version so you are working on it will give me the complete uh, system and uh, then kernel version uh, is kernel username u name hyphen r similarly I can type more commands for example the calendar calendar for the month is and you can type the command cal point to be noted if you are using echo command and you want to include the ins command output in the within the message you are using back quote if you are using uh, the command independently on a uh, one line itself you are typing simple commands and now the uh, important part we ask the username and to switch to the directory so currently let me display the message currently you are working on working in so I, I am going to type PWD command that gives me the present working directory so currently you are working in new directory now I'm going to execute the command CD dollar I, I must type that in this uh, dollar uh, double quotes CD dollar work directory work directory work dir so cd dollar work dir and now with a message now you are working in again the command pwd in back code so that will give me the output of a, uh, you know present working directory so this way that's the end of the script now so end of the script 
so this way what i have typed i have properly commented my script let's go through the script what we have created clear the screen and welcome message for the user on the terminal so clear screen welcome hello and welcome to shell programming ask some basic details from the user and verify read command with prompt as i executed on the shell prompt i typed and this message will be displayed these values will be taken from the user now displaying the message hey username you want to work in work directory i'm just substituting the value of the variable here so uh, this message after that is some interesting commands that can be used for example display logged in user who command will display that following users are logged in and uh, then you are working on u name hyphen a kernel version is this and uh, also calendar to uh, for the month is cal command i'm using uh, cd command to change to the working directory and uh, you are working in pwd present working directory before the change and after the change now i'm going to save this so this is a, so these are some basic commands i have entered into this script but before going and uh, going ahead i want to switch to uh, some other user also su hyphen oracle and i'm logged in as oracle user now so i have two three sessions let me open one more session su hyphen root this will switch to another this will create another session of root and user add sangwan and su hyphen sangwan so i'm logged in as sangwan also i'm logged in as oracle also i have three four sessions now second step after you create the script is that you give execute permissions to the script for that command is ch mode change mode a that means all plus means add the permission x means execute permission script 1 dot sh to which you want to execute the permission now to execute the script which you have given there are multiple ways and i am going to demonstrate each one of them separately one by one that needs little discussion so that because that is important if i use a simple script 1 nothing will happen script 1.sh command not found why because by default linux searches whatever command you type into these directories separated by colon one by one so i'll go and search whether this script.sh what you typed exist in this file or not in the directory or not if not then it'll search in this directory separated by colon so it will search all these directories one by one if not Uh, then uh, it will display the command not found if the the file uh, does not exist in any of these so in though your script is executable it is available in the current directory so you are not able to execute it so there are two options where you are working right now either you you know specify the complete path that is called absolute path so either you specify the absolute path of the script or you specify relative path absolute path will be the uh, the complete path slash script1 dot sh this is called absolute path the script will be executed there will be deliberate error left so please wait i will explain that but right now we are trying to execute the script first thing was it was it has cleared the screen hello and welcome to shell script programming that was the first message second was your name with the directory so that's the message we asked the user to enter so my your name is sang1 and i wish to work in slash root directory all right so these are the two entries i have made and so hey sangwan so you want to work in slash root so the username is substituted here and the directory is also substituted here perfect so we got the message cool following users are logged in so this is the output of who command you are working in uh, on linux server one dot example dot com so this is the output of this uh, complete up to here this was the output of uh, u name hyphen a and the kernel version is u name hyphen r this is the output of u name hyphen r calendar for the month is the cal command so we got the output of the cal command we are working in september 2021 but that is strange thing is here currently you are working into this now you are working in slash root but where are you actually working that is interesting thing i'm still working here 
so though my script was changed when i was executing the script the directory changed the working directory changed but why after i exit exited from the script i am still working in this and not in this directory that is a very a weird thing but then this is true this is how it works how it is working why it is working like this we need to understand that but first of all let's continue with the execution so first way of the shell which we executed the way was uh, we specify the absolute path now the relative path relative path is specified with current directory current directory is specified by dot so if you type dot slash the script name it will be executed so this is called relative path and same method this time i am typing uh, let's say randy and followed by slash root slash python so uh, you got the same message hey randy you want to walk into this directory following users are logged in so you are you are working on this uh, shell i mean this uh, linux and current version is this september calendar everything is fine except that you are still working in the same directory so there are uh, uh, you know this is a very uh, interesting find to observe here execution of the script is fine but why i am not switching to that directory where i want to work before i disclose before i give you the answer let's execute the script for the third time absolute path we discussed then we also discussed how to uh, use relative path the third option is put the script into uh, executable path and where what are the executable path echo dollar path will give you that so i can put this uh, under this directory if the directory does not exist i can create it mk dir and i create it if the directory exists good if not this will create it and let's move this file mv script1.sh slash root slash bin all right so the file is moved this time you don't have to specify anything this time it will work without any script script.sh script1.sh and no dot required no path required you can directly execute because now it is able to search the script in the given path and i'm trying to execute it same method my name is sangwan and i want to work in slash root directory and slash document but still the same we are still working in the same directory why i am still working in the same directory i let's raise the curtain from this uh, suspense how it happens team uh, how it actually works when you execute any command another shell is created which is a child shell of the current shell so when i was executing the command that was let's copy back for the command first uh, slash root slash bin script 1 in the current directory when i was executing this uh, command the script here dot slash script 1 dot sh uh, another shell was created and then all the commands of this script were executed within that process within that shell we call it a child shell after the all the commands were executed the child shell exited so it was a parent child concept where another child process was created all the commands were executed message which were displayed you were switched to everything was fine but when you are out of that process you are actually back to the same shell that is why you are still working in shell programming but if you want to achieve that then you have to execute the shell in the current process without forking a new shell without forking a new shell and for that you have dot or source you can use either source or dot if you use dot operator or source operator then a new shell will not be forked new shell will not be created 
and the shell will be executed in the current context, in the current namespace, in the current process. And then you will see the actual output, what you are expecting, that you will actually switch to the directory where you, whatever specify in the command. Let's try. So slash root, oh, my name is, let's say, Randy. And I want to work in slash root, slash Python. So, hey, Randy, so you want to work in root Python? Now, interesting point is here, currently you are working in slash programming, but new directory is now Python and you can check that with pwd command and you are working in pw uh, Python directory. That was the magic. The magic was a new shell is parsed or you are working in the current shell. So to work, continue working in the current shell, you use dot operator. So dot operator will make it or source operator by the, uh, for that matter, is the same thing, dot or source. That will make the shell uh, running in the current. Now let's go back to that. And let's copy another interesting shell, cp. Let's understand this script now. This script is going to do some magical thing for you. I'm going to explain this. So bin bash, shebang, comment, set the root password. This would include lowercase letters, uppercase letters, and numbers and special characters. This is the script I was talking about that uh, the, we are going to discuss a script which will install MySQL on our system. So what is this command doing? It's not doing any magical thing. It's just uh, taking a variable, database underscore pass wd, or I mean password equals root db pass hash one two. So I'm setting a variable here with this value. No complex thing. Next, what am I doing here? Remove existing installation and comment out these lines if not needed. In my case, you know that actually there were my SQL server running. So I need to remove, there might be MariaDB libraries also I need to remove, I want to clean up everything. So display this message, echo, means display the message to the user, removing previous MySQL server installation and MariaDB. So it's going to do that, it will clean up this. So what this command is, this is a quite long command from here to here, up to here, this is one single command. But interesting fact about this command is whether you are working as root user or you are working as non-root user, provided you have showed over privileges, this command will work well. So system CTL stop MySQL D service. This will stop MySQL D server. If it is not running, it will fail. If MySQL is not installed, it will fail. And if the, fa if the command will fail, assuming that MySQL server is not installed and not running, so this command will fail, obviously. If that command fails, I don't want to proceed for rest of the bunch of the commands which I given. How am I doing that? That is possible with this double ampersand sign. This is called conditional execution. When you give conditional execution or you know double ampersand sign, basically the uh, command given on the right hand side will be executed only if the command on the left hand side is successful. So that means if this command fails, sudo systemctl stop mysql d service if this command fails this will not be executed hence the rest of the process uh, uh, no command will be executed however if this command is successful meaning this process was actually running and it was stopped then execute this command that is remove mysql community server i am removing mysql community server after this command is successful uh, remove the directory that is the data directory which is where live my sql so remove the data directory and after that remove the where log my sql d directory and after that remove my uh, you know this uh, my.cnf file i am removing everything and then if there is anything related to maria db install remove that also and then uh, remove the repository URL also because MySQL 8.0 community release dot no arc is actually uh, uh, repository URL, uh, repository RPM. Remove this. So I'm removing everything. 
deleting all the packages related to MariaDB and MySQL. Set the YAM repository and install MySQL community server. This is again the comment as I explained earlier. Echo display a message to the user installing MySQL community edition. So YAM local install, this is the path to the uh, RPM of the community uh, MySQL release. So it will install the community RPM directly from this URL. We call it as local install, yum local install, and the RPM will be installed. Similarly, now it is installing all the packages that are starting with MySQL community hyphen server. Dot star means all the packages that starts with MySQL community server. And dependencies also, because yum will resolve the dependencies. Then after that, uh, start MySQL D, MySQL server, and grab temporary password. This grab temporary password I explained uh, using SCD command. I explained the command in detail. And that is why you will not find it very difficult at all to understand. So first thing is I'm enabling MySQL D service. I'm starting MySQL service here. System CTL start MySQL D service. What is this dollar uh, two greater than symbol dev null? This is null device. This is black hole. And this two greater than symbol means redirect the error. If there is any error generated by this command, dump them to the null device. I don't want to see them. That is not my interest. I know there is no error, but just in case. So two greater than symbol means redirect the errors. Redirect the errors to null device in both the cases and enable the service. Now this is how am I gripping the root password. Temporary password. Temp root password is equal to, now this is the command I demonstrated. Grab temporary dot star root at localhost from this file and then tail hyphen n l n1 means the last line because the latest will be the in the last line then sad and this is the command i demonstrated as substitute everything means any character any number of times zero or more times followed by root followed by at the rate symbol followed by localhost followed by colon followed by space every single thing is important here so followed by colon followed by space with nothing because this uh, slash means a closure of substitution so this will be substituted whatever from here to here with what nothing because I immediately closing the slash so it will not be substituted it will simply discard it will be removed so Temporary password will have the value of actual temporary password. Now set the new password for MySQL user. So display this message and this we are logging into MySQL server. MySQL hyphen u root hyphen hyphen password the temporary password which is grabbed here. Connect MySQL expired password. If even if the password is expired connect that and execute this command hyphen a means the command you want to execute within the MySQL server and this hyphen E will execute the command which you specify and what is this command this is uh, setting the password for root user what password you are is setting alter user root at localhost identified by the variable name database password you know right in the beginning second line third line uh, had this password database password so I'm using the value of that variable substituting that variable here and that will set my root password so this is resetting the password, flush the privileges, and then exiting it. So do some basic hardening. MySQL hyphen U root uh, password, database password. Now it is logging in with a new password. Delete from MySQL user where user is blank, which is anonymous user. Drop database test if exist. Uh, delete from DB where the database name is test. Right? Flush privileges. So what we are doing, we are uh, actually executing all the commands as new user, the root user. Then perform a sanity check. The last step is verify that you are able to log in successfully. And after that login successfully is done, you quit from that. Enable the firewall, the firewall setting. Whatever command you give at the shell prompt, you are actually entering those commands here. Firewall CMD, permanent, add service, MySQL, send the messages to null device and then reload the firewall and throw back the messages throw back the information to the user which is mysql installation server complete root password is the value of the database password and this is simple but powerful script let's execute it dot slash 
mysql dot sh so this will remove as you have seen this will remove my existing community server and since it was actually installed so it will it uh, it has stopped the services now it is removing the servers removing the packages and then it will clean up all the directories after cleaning up all the directories it will uh, you know uh, set up the repository because it will even install uh, remove this uh, community server release directory so it is displaying the appropriate messages it is doing the way it is expected to do it is downloading the package after the package download is complete is going to install mysql community server and going to reset the password and is going to uh, display the password to me so those who are non technical people those who don't have any clue about this that uh, we can do this kind of automation which is such a easy script remember i have not used any uh, loops that is uh, programming construct iteration i have not used any uh, case that is called uh, selection uh, in construct i have not call, used any function so without any powerful feature i created a powerful script no function used no iteration used no selection construct used we call it as control structures no control structures used but still the script is doing a very good job it is cleaning up your existing installation if you have and and then it is uh, installing a new mysql version mysql 8 on your system and setting the password for it and uh, throwing the password back to you the same script is available on the website www. skillpedia.co that is s k i w l skill p e d i a p e d i a dot c o dot co skillpedia dot co you can get the same script and uh, after we finish this script because next session uh, coming up session will be more comprehensive session where we'll discuss conditional remember it is not a institutional training what you are doing here production level stuff so we'll be doing production level stuff. in our training will be doing some real serious stuff using simple commands using simple techniques and i will i assure you that i'll make the entire learning so easy and uh, at the end of this uh, complete training you will be able to do the uh, production level work with a simple commands people prefer you know uh, a equal to 10 b equal to 20 sum of a plus b is equal to 30 i mean uh, that's not a serious stuff if you are really doing some serious stuff do something which is meaningful do something which is uh, uh, helpful for anybody now this script i'm sure anybody who is interested in creating installing mysql on linux they don't need to google anything this script will help them so if you are interested in installing uh, mysql on centos with the help of a script with automated installation mind it this script can be tweaked it can be modified i have modified version also where you have local dump installed you have local rpm installed and you are installing from a local repository rather than downloading the repository if you have your own uh, uh, rpm database that is uh, your own database if you have right that is uh, a rem repository em repository so if you have em repository it will install that from your local rem em repository as well so this script can be enhanced and you can also put conditional right now this was a simple script assuming that everything will go smooth what if the disk space is not sufficient what if uh, uh, the services i mean some services are crashing what if uh, the log file uh, is written in different format what if there are i mean there are multiple if condition there are multiple what if the password is simple what if the variable the file does not exist at a given file location where we are trying to so there were no checks in the script but then that can be done next time next session we'll do some serious uh, logical stuff uh, this was a simple basic introduction to uh, shell scripting where we discussed how to create a shell script how to write a shell script and how to install mysql using a simple shell script but powerful shell script okay uh, useful let's try so uh, the installation part is done and this has tried let's log in mysql hyphen u root and hyphen p and i'm going to type this password and i'm done so i'm logged in 
so that's what the um, objective was i'm logged in as a root user with a new password my installation is successful so that is uh, that's all for the day i'm sure you enjoyed it and uh, you will be able to create this kind of script which will do some automation for you thank you very much for watching bye bye